Good evening, wonderful people, great Biafrans, wherever you are, on the face of this very planet, this very day, the sixth day of April, in the year of one most high Elohim, 2019, the time is approximately four minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are. I welcome each and every one of you, and as I do so, I will encourage you to welcome other people as well. Today is a landmark broadcast day. We shall be this day. We shall be dissecting everything that is wrong with the Bible Zoological Republic, the way they interpret and apply their laws and the injudiciousness of the judiciary. A typical example of which is Binta Nyako Scott. We must do justice to this very topic today. I will be addressing the entirety of humanity because I have the divine mandate to speak about Biafra, to propagate Biafra, to deliver this message of redemption and of hope to those who have been downtrodden, to those of us that unfortunately found ourselves inhabiting the same geopolitical space as those who are incapable of reasoning, those who are incapable of humanized civilization, and those who are incapable of doing things right the way they ought to be. But before we go any further, we must hand over our proceedings to the Most High, Chikokika Biyama. My name is Unamde Kano. I am the leader of IPOB. And by the special grace of Chikokika Biyama, I will serve the wonderful people of Biafra until the day I no longer draw any breath on this very earth. For Biafra must come in our time, and there is nothing our enemies can ever do to suppress that inescapable reality. We must pray capable reality. We must pray because we are nothing without Chukwokika Biyama, as our ancestors did thousands and millions of years ago. So shall I do this evening. Because nobody taught us about Chukwokika Biyama. We knew it from inception because we are descended from heaven itself. This evening, we shall pray the same prayer that David prayed many, many years ago. We are pleased this very evening because Chukwokika Biyama hear it, our voice and our supplication. Because he had inclined his ear unto us. Therefore, we shall call upon him as long as we live. We are not idol worshippers. We are not heathens. We are children of the Most High, Chukwokika Biyama. Though the sorrows of death encompass us and the pains of hell got hold upon us. We found trouble and we found sorrow. But each time we call upon the name of the Most High, any time we present our supplication before Elohim, He hears our prayers and He delivers our soul. For gracious is the Most High and righteous too. For our Creator Chukwokika Biyama is merciful. He will preserve us Chukwokika Biyama will preserve his children. Be because up until this day, without his mercy, I will not be alive to continue to propagate this very divine gospel. That is why our souls will not be troubled. It shall rest. For Chukwokika Biyama has dealt bountifully with us. 
who has delivered our soul from death, our eyes from tears, and our feet from falling. As long as we are IPAB, we can never fall. For Biafra shall come in our time. For we shall walk before the Most High, Chukukikabiyama, in the land of the living. I believe this evening, therefore I have spoken, that though I was greatly afflicted, and I said in my haste, that man is altogether vanity, what shall I, what shall I render unto Elohim for all his kindness towards all of us, towards IPOB? For we shall take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Most High. We shall pay our vows unto Elohim in the presence of his people. For we are precious in the sight of the Most High Elohim. O oh, Heavenly Father, for truly we are your servants. We come before thee. You have loosed all our bonds. You have broken the chains of damnation and of slavery. Therefore, this very noble family, my POB, wherever they are domiciled on the face of this very earth, shall offer unto thee a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We shall call upon the name of Chukwokikabiyama. We shall pay our vows unto thee in the presence of your children in the land of Biafra. For in thy presence, O Elohim, in the midst of thee, Oh, Biafra, we shall praise the Most High. We shall call upon the grace of the Creator of everything that has been made. That this evening and always, no matter where we are, we will ceaselessly and continually offer praise and adoration, worship and exaltation unto your holy name. For forever and ever we pray. He say, He say, He say, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Because this very broadcast is being listened to right across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet. For that reason alone, we must broadcast. We must preach this very gospel. And ultimately, the zoo will fall. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Those that underestimate us do so at their own peril. They do so at their own cost. Because here we tell you what we are going to do before we do it. Our enemies may, our enemies may gather, they may gang up against us, they may conspire against us, but they shall never ever prevail upon our lives. Because our mission is divine. And Chukwokika Biama has authenticated IPOB to restore Biafra. And that is exactly what we are going to do. This very gospel this evening is a very solemn one. This very gospel this evening is one that will leave an indelible mark on the minds and the conscience of the people. That is why we must come prepared. And before we came on air, I made it very clear, I instructed my deputy to ensure, to ensure that certain documents are circulated extensively, that everybody may follow this very broadcast, because what we are doing is not out of our own making nor concoction, but we are referencing the laws of the damnable zoological republic. Their own laws 
This is what we are using to judge them this very evening. Nobody should go anywhere or be in a hurry. Let people gather around you to participate in this very unique podcast this evening. My mission is very simple. To prove to the whole world and especially the Nigerian judiciary that everything IPOB is doing is according to the dictates of the laws of Nigeria. Of the laws of Nigeria. Not UN, not Africa Union, but by the laws of Nigeria itself. Therefore, the persecution must stop. And all the court cases dismissed. I must ask you this evening, if you don't have any of these documents to lay hands on them, simply go to Google and type them in. You will be able to get them there. The first document that I want you to have is the Constitution of the Damnable Zoological Republic. Go and get online electronically, please. Go to Google and type in the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. You have it open. You also go and look for the African Charter on People's Rights. African, African Charter on Human and People's Rights. These things are on my page. Mazen Nam, the Canada official one. It is also on Uchame Falls. Facebook page and a few other places as well. I want it also on Radio Biafra, please. African Charter on Human and People's Rights. I want you to also go and look for the laws of the Federation of Nigeria. We are going to judge them using their own laws. I want to prove to them tonight that they are vacuous and empty. They are not educated, not as we are. I did not study law, but by the grace of Elohim, we shall lay the zoo bear for the world to know that these animals and vandals are incapable of following the laws that they themselves made. In other words, they do not belong to civilization. They should go back to milking cows and drinking cow blood. They are incapable of human advancement and civilization because laws, written down laws, right from Hammurabi in Mesopotamia has stood the test of time when men write down laws, they adhere to it and they obey it, but in the zoo they don't. Go and get laws of the Federation of Nigeria, African Charter on Human and People's Rights, two documents on this very African charter. You also go and get the Criminal Code Act. The Criminal Code Act detailing every offense in the zoo so that the world may know that we so that the world may know that we have not committed not one single offense, not one single crime. Let humanity be the judge of us against the zoo tonight. Get those four documents. They are on my page. They are being distributed everywhere. Simply click on the link. It takes you to where you, you ought to be. That we may do justice to the judiciary of the evil contraption, British created contraption, the Zoo Republic of Nigeria. Every day we hear about people talk about peace and unity. That is the motto on their coat of arms. When a Fulani jihadist is speaking, they talk about unity of the zoo. We must come together. We must make progress. We must be united. If there is no peace, there is no progress. Every day they keep crying out for peace. But have you noticed that nobody talks about justice? Nobody talks about obeying the rule of law or adhering to the rule of law, doing the right thing. No, they want peace at all costs. Even as they bring jihad into our land, they want us to talk about peace. 
as they rig and falsify election results. All they talk about is peace and let's move forward. As they lock up innocent men and women and demand extortionate amount of money from their parents and their guardians that they may be released. All they talk from their parents and their guardians that they may be released. All they talk about is peace. Nobody talks about justice. Here tonight, we talk about justice as we always do. Every aspect of life in Nigeria is steeped in injustice. There is something not quite right with the thought process of an average black person, as I shall demonstrate later on. You know, sometimes they accuse me, they say you castigate black people, but I have a reason for that, and tonight I'll prove it. All the beautiful laws written down to guide governance in Africa, all the laws written down, enacted, enshrined in national laws across Africa, designed to protect the citizen. No African country, including South Africa, I repeat, I say, no African country obey the laws that they make. No country obey the laws that they make. It's a very big shame. But we are focusing on the zoo. And that's what we must do tonight. Because Chukwoke Kabiyama is in heaven to bear us witness. Everywhere you go, there is injustice in every corner. Where you have a powerful man or powerful group of criminals, they do as they please. People are not in control of the government. You can never ever notice any discernible human progress. Documented civilization, I'm not talking about African civilization, I'm talking about written down documented civilization. Is it a surprise that Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia that part of Persia, where the laws of man was written down on a tablet of stone many years ago. I'm sure most of you have heard about Hammurabi, the code, written down laws. Is it a surprise that civilization, the way we know it today, started from the place where men wrote down laws and respected it? There is something about written laws, obedience to laws, which is the rule of law that Buhari before he died never adhered to. That no Fulani ruler has ever adhered to. That even now, this imposter from Sudan, Jubil al-Sudani, that most of you stupidly and of course predictably went to vote for in APC, a Sudanese man. Way younger than the dead Buhari. Way younger than the dead Buhari. Cannot adhere to the rule of law. Isn't that why you are the poorest country in the world? Isn't that why you are poverty stricken? Isn't that why you are the last of everything that you go into? Because any group of people, any society, anybody, if you cannot obey the laws that you made yourself, that means you are not capable to be called a human being. That was why ancient people wrote down their laws. We must preach this very gospel. That is why in black Africa, we appear to be sinking lower and lower into the darkness of oppression and injustice. Even in South Africa, where people fought and died to eradicate apartheid, now they have grown wings. They are killing, now they have grown wings. They are killing fellow blacks. These idiots never killed any white person. But when it comes to a fellow black, we all grow strength out of nowhere. What am I trying to say? That the whole of Africa is polluted with iniquity because Africans do not obey their own laws. I'm here to prove it tonight. Especially in the zoo. Not only don't they obey the laws in the zoo, they don't even know that these laws exist. That is why the likes of Bintan, Yako, John Toso, all the cabal judges that you have, all the cash and carry judges that you have, 
don't know their own laws. These are judges. They are there to interpret the law. They don't know the law. They are ignorant of that very law. They are supposed to interpret. I shall prove it to you. The killing of other black people. The killing of other black people in South Africa. Is a disgrace. That tells you how a black person behaves. The same thing applies to some of the baby saboteurs we have. Some of the idiots that we have. They wake up in the morning, they decide to try to sabotage Biafra. They never advance it because they are black. Their soul is evil and dark. They can never see light. To fight for and you know they can't. To fight this, you know they can't. It's only to fight the effort we are making. Very soon they'll be dead anyway. Be rest assured. It was the parents of the same black people that are killing us now on the streets of South Africa. Their parents that fought for the end of, of apartheid. Now you understand why we want Biafra. Biafra will be the only nation in Africa capable of being just, civil, and fair. No other country, no other nation in Africa is capable of what Biafra is capable of bringing to the table. They know this. That is why they want to drag us down to their level in the gutter. That is why they don't want Biafra to come because they know what awaits the coming of Biafra because every nation in Africa will become enlightened they will learn from Biafra they will borrow from Biafra Nigeria and their lawlessness aided and abated by the likes of Bintan Yaku. NJC, the Judicial Council, our approval of this tonight. Remember John Tozo? The idiot they brought to jail me and I told him he's joking. Your army in the zoo that never fights any war, never conquers any territory for anybody. They lost Bakasi. Without the help of Niger, of Chad and of Cameroon, Boko Haram will still be controlling about six states in the north of the zoo. They never won any war on their own. Biafra war was beaten and Russia that helped them. All they specialize in is killing unarmed civilians. The only country in the world that does that. And you want the only country in the world that does that. And you want me to respect you as a Nigerian. You want me to have regard for you as a baboon in a zoo. You cannot reason properly. All the armies of the world are fighting, conquering territories for their nation. The zoo army, all they do is kill civilians. And tomorrow they promote them to, to field marshal, generalship, heaven knows what else. Very sad indeed. Is it your so-called socio-cultural organizations that you have? They start to talk rubbish. Igbo is your cultural this or that. Wherever the money goes, they whatever the color of the currency, that is the view and opinion you get from them. And the ignorance of the populace. Of the populace. That is the worst of it all. That the people who should rise up against tyranny, rise up against oppression. They are the ones who foolishly, I must say, condoning the same evil that is consuming them. That is how ignorant they are. Let us begin by looking at the highest levels of lawlessness in the zoo called Nigeria. Before we get to Bintan Yako and what she is doing in her court, she said the court is hers. The building is her own. She can do whatever she likes. She is not answerable to anybody, not to any law, not to any written rules. Anything she says is what goes. That's what she's telling everybody every blessed day. Let us, can you be done now, from the beginning, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are, especially the Nigerian judiciary. That's what I want to prove to everybody. 
they are the inst they are the instigators of lawlessness. You see all those judges with their British wig. That uh, name also sounds in some mad. How you had the radical cool telling me, Mabu Mabu. People will punch you. Imagine a black man in a white wig. Can you imagine it? They look like Pam not fortune. But that is what they wear. They look pathetic and ridiculous. But they wear it because they want to look like British. But you don't practice the law the way they do in England. Because for a black man, you don't obey the law. You're a justice. Let us see how foolish they are. You will all remember the appointment of a chief justice of the federation, for example. You know that man, Tanko Muhammad, or whatever he's called. Ask yourself this question this evening or this morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. How did Nigeria end up with a Sharia court judge as the chief justice of the federation? The chief justice of a jurisprudence that practices common law. Have this in mind, and I asked you before to go and download common law. I will tell you what it means later, and why I'm, why I'm, I'm, I'm pointing it out now. Some Nigerians, in their God-given ignorance, think that Sharia law and common law legal systems are the same. Sharia law and common law legal systems are the same. That is how that, some even some lawyers they, they think it's the same. But you know what they have done? They cleverly twist it, as Pinta and Yako and the Flanny judges have done to civil law. There is a difference between common and civil law. There is a massive difference, I will tell you later. Have those documents I ask you to download much ready. The process of breaking the law in Nigeria starts from the very top because citizens don't know that disobedience to established law and order by your presidency, which is Jubril, controlled by the, by the cabal, by the judiciary, by the AJC, is the reason why in Nigeria, that great zoo is a wild, wild west. What, what does their constitution, the 19, I asked you to go and get a copy. What does that constitution say about the appointment of a chief justice? And has that simple process been followed? In the removal of Onogin and the appointment of Tanko, the Sharia judge that replaced him. This is NJC. They are the final custodians of the law. But here they are breaking the law. These are people who should be saying to Jubril, to Abak Yari, and the rest of their other four cabal, what you're doing is wrong. It's against the constitution, but to hell with everybody. It is Nigeria, anything goes. As long as Yoruba media is behind us, we can do whatever we like. As long as Tinubu wants to be president in 2023, he can bring Yoruba media with him, we can do whatever we like. That's what's happening in the zoo. And only yesterday, they said NJC recommends compulsory retirement. He recommends compulsory retirement for Nogin. And surprise, surprise, Tanko Muhammad that replaced him committed no wrong. If you look at this very statement on face value, you think there's nothing wrong with it. But let us go to the zoo constitution and see. I want people to go to the constitution you downloaded in your phone, in your app, in whatever computer, whatever thing that you're using. Gather around and have a look at chapter 3. At chapter 3. It is called the Judicature. Chapter 3, sorry, chapter V plus 117, isn't it? In Roman numerals. V is 5117, sorry, chapter 7. The Judicature is called chapter 7 of the Constitution of the Zoo. I want you to move to subsection, or should I say section 231.1. It is called 1.1. It is called, it is in chapter 7, the judicature. It is, it deals with the appointment of a person to the office of the justice of the Supreme Court of the Zoo. And also, very, very interestingly, who should be in NJC or not? This is what Jubril did. I don't know if they have found it. Has anybody found it here? The judicature. It is chapter 7 of the Constitution of the Zoo. 
231.1 go down to 231.5 231.4 231.4 this is the constitution of nigeria that i'm quoting not any laws from anywhere else what does it say it says if you say it says, if the office of Chief Justice of Nigeria is vacant, or if the person holding the office is for any reason unable to perform the functions of the office, then until a person has been appointed to and has assumed the functions of that office, or until the person holding has resumed those functions, listen carefully, the president shall appoint the most senior justice of the Supreme Court to perform those functions. This is the part of the constitution of the zoo that the cabal used to justify the removal of a organ. This is the part of the constitution that corrupts Yoruba lawyers. Senior advocate amongst them tried to argue in court as to why a organ should be removed. The constitution says should be removed. The constitution says here, if that position is vacant, not if the person is removed by the president, if it is vacant, by which they mean, either due to ill health or death. But they saw this opportunity and they took it to remove an organ. In their own constitution. In their own constitution. Now let's go to number five, where it clears things up for us. Except on the recommendation of the, the same NJC, except at their recommendation, any appointment pursuant to the provisions of the subsection four of this section shall cease to have any effect after the expiration of three months from the date of such appointment. In other words, Tanko Muhammad, after three months, should leave office. It doesn't matter. That's what the constitution says. But do you know what they have done? They have prepared for him to continue. That was why NJC said that Tanko Mohammed committed no wrong. Do you see how they are subverting the constitution? Do you see how they are subverting it? The law here says, if the person holding the office, which is on organ, is for any reason unable, for any reason unable to perform his function, is an organ sick? Was he involved in a, in a motor accident? Has his speech been impaired? Has his brain been affected in any way? He should not have left office. Because the same constitution says, unless you are convicted of a crime, you are innocent of that very crime. It is in this same constitution, which I get to it later. Do you see how they are playing with you? Messing about with your mind? Do you see how confused NJC is? It's unfortunate that the so-called NJC doesn't know their own constitution or out of fear have refused to insist that the government be held accountable, refused to insist that the government be held accountable to its dictates. We are in the constitution. Where is it? In this question, that empowers the cabal through Jubril al Sudani to suspend the Morgan without the senate voting on it you can't because the man is not dead he is not confirmed this man has all his faculties intact you should not remove him unless uh, he's been convicted of a crime or uh, two thirds of the senate votes to get rid of him let's continue the president of the zoo yes admittedly has the right to appoint a, an acting chief justice when the president or the holder of the office is unable to perform his duties his duties not convicted by anybody but it gets more interesting as we go on according to the NJC Justice Walter Onogen had lost the moral authority to continue as Nigerian chief justice over the litany of allegations bordering on misconduct. This is from NJC. Now, my question to them is this. 
in in all the law schools that you went to, when is it that an allegation now becomes proof of guilt? Mere allegation. So anybody can raise any allegation. And by virtue of that, you are now condemned. You are guilty. Do you see how they're reasoning this? Way? These are these are judges, chief justice of appeal court, chief justice of the federation. Bang them, their brains are empty. The first thing they tell is that you are innocent until proven guilty. That you are innocent until proven guilty. Here you have NJC supporting and validating iniquity. Validating iniquity in their own ranks. The question I'm asking is this. Who in NJC determined that Onoyen have lost the moral authority? Is it a properly constituted court of law or is it the Fulani Kabbal in Asarok running Nigeria that wants their own Fulani Islamist, this Tanko Muhammad man, to take over the reins of the judiciary? The same way they have succeeded in taking over the army, the air force, everything is Fulani. And the entire governance of the zoo called Nigeria. But, um, has uh, no been convicted of, of any crime? The answer is no. Which means he is innocent. Until you prove him guilty. That is the basic, that is the basic, uh, that is the essence, the foundation of primary school law. Or else, uh, anybody can level accusation against me. And IPOB will ask me to leave office. That should no longer lead them. Based on mere action, uncontested, untested, unproven. Where is your innocent until proven guilty? Where is it going to? Why am I touching upon this before I go to Pintanyeko? Is I want to lay the foundation that lawlessness in Nigeria starts from those useless judges that look like vulture we are with their white European wig. They don't make any sense. Not at all. Now, we must continue. Has Onogan been convicted of any crime as to incapacitate him? The answer is no. Why did Jubil al Sudani, the Fulani Kabal, why did they remove Onogan? Nobody can answer that question. Oh, nobody can answer that question. All the zoo animals you have in Nigeria, they can't answer that simple question. Why? You say it is an all allegation. Anybody can level whatever allegation on anybody. After all, they accuse me of taking money from ABC. Then they later accuse me of taking money from PDP. Very soon they'll accuse me of taking money from Lucifer. That is how they are. Accusation means nothing without proof. That is why you have law. I'm a justice. Have appeal court. Retired chief justice. They are all of you. Are mad people, all of you. Insane. Look at you presiding over injustice. The conviction of a man without proper trial, without following the due process of law, and you're telling me that you're a judge, you're a justice, you're an NJC. Why is it difficult? Difficult for us to understand that mere allegation is not proof of guilt. How many more since uh, millennia do you have to live on this earth before you understand that? That is very basic law they teach you in primary four. Primary, what I'm telling you now, I learned when I was in primary four. Heaven is my witness. That you don't convict anybody until you, until you find them guilty in a court of law. Or else there'll be anarchy everywhere. Or is this a dictatorship? Don't you know that? We must continue. Where is it, that cornerstone of justice that says presumption of innocence before proven guilty? Do you see how Fulani is <laughs> debasing and rubbishing everybody? Not just our reasoning ability, but our morality as well. Yorubas have no morals because of the Fulani. It's because of the Fulani. You see learned Yoruba men. These are learned people. You see them supporting evil. You see a son supporting the removal of a mugging without the due process of law. But all the allegations against Fulani people are swept under the carpet. Remember Ibrahim Lamode of EFCC, Zunoshi, na EFCC, swept under the carpet. What is he? 
lunatics. To understand why Onoyen was removed, you have to appreciate who the chairman of the same NJC is. But first of all, in fact, let us even look at the commission of the NJC. Who are these NJC people? According to the same constitution you're looking at, it's called the National Judicial Council. You'll find it on page 132 of the Nigerian constitution. It tells you about the composition of the NJC that recommended that Onoyen should go, that Onoyen should go because of the weight of allegation, not guilt, against him, but that the present chairman, uh, Tanko Muhammad, is free. Let us look at who made that decision. Maybe that can clarify things for us a bit. The national, according to the constitution of the zoo, not me, the National Judicial Council shall comprise of the following members. Here we go. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, who shall be the chairman. In other words, it is the same Tanko Muhammad that they used to replace Onogen that is chairing the committee that recommended that Onogen should go. What other instance do you need of um, prejudice, if not this? They sat in their full and a cabal meeting and decided to remove Onoyen. He's from South South. Nobody will care. All they know is to talk. Some some of the told there. They are from say, All they know is to talk about uh, Biafra talking rubbish. They suck their brother. They cannot do anything about it. They are normal. Onoyen was removed because they know that people will not rise up. Full and they know you very well. You won't rise up. The man now recommending and insisting that Onogen should resign is the chairman of the NJC, the same Fulani man they used to replace him. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the foundation of injustice in the zoo. This is from NJC themselves. Now, my contention is that injustice is not just that I'm just telling you the watchdog of the judiciary's NJC. See how bad they are. Then what hope do you have for the lives of Bintan Yako? Every layer of legal practice in Nigeria is steeped in injustice, including ordinary lawyers. And we shall get to that later. If the parent body can be so parochial, defiant and evil, I mean NJC, how much less those who are meant to hold in check the likes of Bintan Yako and other judges in the zoo. Because they can't do anything to them. A judge can do whatever. They, they, go, they go to NJC and they say, me, I know your secret as well. You, you, don't, you don't obey the law as well. And they sweep, sweep it under the carpet. That's what they do. In Bintan Yako's court and many courts across the zoo called Nigeria, detention centers like the DSS dungeons, the cells you have in the army barracks, Police cells, the SARS and their organ harvesting facilities across Nigeria. I'm sure you heard it, that Nigeria is the number one place for organ um, harvesting and transplant. I don't know who does that. One place for organ um, harvesting and transplant. I don't know who does that. It's SARS now. They arrest your child 8 p.m. in the evening. Your child is dead, gone missing, gone forever and ever. They cut open his stomach or her stomach, take the liver and take every kidney, everything they need, and they ship it to India. And some of you bought the flight and go to India for transplant. You see the, the circle of our stupidity. That will be a topic for another day. But uh, SARS that harvest organs for, <laughs> for the rulers of the zoo. Innocent people are being held without charge in all these centers. Denied appearance before a court of law for years. When I was in DSS dungeon in their custody, I raised this very issue when I was transferred to Kujia and I came to court. I said it. People are locked up in Communicado for four or five years. They have never seen the sunlight before. You know, Nigeria and our black people, they say, as usual, uh, 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 God, uh, 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 God will provide. This will bring another carpet. I met many people in DSS dungeon, even in Lagos, where I was arrested, and also in Abuja. They have been in the same spot for four years. I said the same spot. If you don't know what DSS dungeon looks like, please try and visit one. You will see human depravity and wickedness. You will never think that such a thing exists in life. That's what they're doing to people. 
And when you take the matter to court to the left of Binta and Yako, they exonerate them. They say, oh, go and file a report of um, habeas corpus. But you're a justice for goodness sake. There are people held without trial. Is it not your job to defend the constitution? Why are you asking me to make an application when you can take a decision there and then? To uphold the constitution that you sued, the constitution that you swore to protect. But they won't do it. Because, you know, they share the money now, the money for feeding. Everybody gets their own court. Judges get their own court. Everybody, they share it. Who is in control of that is the Ministry of Interior. Dambanzao, or Dambanza. That is the one controlling that sector now. So let me tell you one thing you don't know. The judges in Nigeria, the police, SARS, all of them, they're in Kahoot. They're all working together to subvert justice. To bring iniquity upon the people and darkness upon the land. The number of Biafrans in detention, DSS custody in Abuja, if any of your relatives are missing from southern Biafra and the coastal region that they call Niger Delta, is in Abuja. Is in Abuja, I'm telling you. I ask for an independent audit of the cells you have in Abuja, the detention facilities there run by DSS. You'll be shocked, run by DSS. You'll be shocked and amazed. How are people that hold him without charge? I said no charge. We shall see what the constitution said about it later. I have people from Niger Delta held in thousands in DSS facility. We know. They arrested Justice Ude from Ohafia. They took him to Abuja. What crime did he commit? Nobody knows. Where was the crime committed? Nobody knows. They took him to Abuja. Emmanuel Jibo arrested in Enugu, taken to Abuja. Uten Nemenike arrested in Enugu, taken to Abuja. Ask yourself, why are they they are waiting? If nobody comes, they'll kill them and take their organs and, and sell it. That's what they do in Nigeria. Go and ask you and not me. Nigeria is the largest market for organs in the world. That is what they do in Nigeria. Look at an eyewitness account. Look at an eyewitness account of daylight robbery. Law enforcement and interpretation of the same law, the same laws within the justice system. Now let us look at what the police has been doing. I'm coming on. We must be very patient this evening. Very, very important that we're patient this evening. If you don't give money to police, you don't go in a boy. Even a number. At anywhere you are, you are in. You know what they will do. They will stop you and say, pack clear well and all, all that nonsense. And you refuse to give them money. I think inter-society inter did a very brilliant job this week. Or, yes, this week. In exposing this racket of death in our land. But the Hanese is there. How did the Azarika say, Nam the Kano did this. Yeah, IPOB did that. If they look at what is happening in their backyard, they cannot speak. Do you know why they cannot speak? Because they have been compromised. They can never ever defend. They can never ever defend you. Never. Only IPOB can. Do you know the work we are doing behind the scenes that you don't see or hear about? Maybe today the Rokia Zipazi went to beg Israel to bring up agriculture to Abia. Now you know what we've been doing. Everybody wants to copy us. They want to be like us. But they can never be like us. Because we're exceptional. If you don't give the police money in Enugu State, somebody quietly and carefully chronicled this for me. It's not my original idea. But I must speak it tonight on this platform. If you don't give police money in Enugu State, for example... You will be locked up in a police cell or worse, taken to a prison. You've not, done, you've not committed any crime at all. This is Nigeria for you. A court of law with a presiding magistrate will now read you a fabricated charge. Maybe a writing with intent and detain you for another 21 days. After which they will tell you, after which they will tell you to go and seek for bail application in a high court. They will not tell you, oh, it's not our jurisdiction. No? Go to high court. They are waiting to see if anybody will come for you. Or they will take you and kill you and harvest your organs. This is happening on a daily basis. Suddenly, they have no jurisdiction to hear the case in magistrate court. They take you to, to high court. At this time, one useless quack charge and bail lawyer will come and approach your family and tell them, Oh, I will apply for motion for bail. Oh. 
For the inmate, you're no longer a detainee, you're not an inmate. Hey, hey, Suddenly, <laughs> from defending the means of your livelihood because you said you will not give policeman money in a checkpoint, a very ravenous and unconscionable police force, you have now become an accused person. The criminal lawyer will first of all take 50,000 naira from you or from your family or from your family. And when you appear in court, the same lawyer will go back and approach your, your parents or your guardian or your relatives. And tell them all that um, I, I need another 250k, 250,000 naira. And uh, also my 5,000 naira for appearance fee. Now listen carefully, appearance fee for lawyers in Nigeria. It is at this point now that the interest of the lawyer is now aligning with the police. It is now in the interest of the lawyer that the police or army or DSS can now detain this person indefinitely if possible. Do you know why? The lawyer collects 5,000 naira every day the case is called up in court. So he has no incentive to ensure an early release of the detainee. No, what for? Every month, every two, two months, you collect 5,000 naira for free. Imagine doing that naira for free. Imagine doing that for 20, 30 people. You don't have to do anything. Just come and try to 5,000 and go. Appearance fee is called. So not only NJC and judges, even ordinary lawyer is among this conspiracy. That is why I said that the soul of a black man is evil. Evil. I say it without <laughs> any, any problems whatsoever. Evil. Even, even lawyers. Appearance fee now takes over. As the case progresses with an innocent man in jail, or woman for that matter, the lawyer one day will quietly disappear and never see him again. This is the height of wickedness in Nigeria. Is it as if every lawyer of the legal profession is in agreement with each other to undermine due process of law? Not just Jubril in Asarok and his handlers, uh, Abakiyari and all the rest of them. Uh, but as with most people, I wonder if they, if this is what they are taught in their law school. Now let us come to Bintan Yaku and the Nigerian judiciary and to prove to you how they have been making a mess of themselves. It is agreed that the constitution of Nigeria is the highest law in the land. People don't know the meaning of constitution, but I will tell you. A constitution is the highest body of law, the highest authority. Even in that same constitution, it is written that any law that the National Assembly makes that contravenes any aspect of this constitution, this constitution takes precedent. So it doesn't matter how many times you quote Akaja or that uh, uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act. Rubbish. Once it contravenes the constitution, that is this bog standard law in the whole world. The Constitution takes precedent. Do they know this? The answer is no. Every, listen carefully please. Every constitution in the world is the same. It is written in as much plain English as possible. And for the purposes of our in-depth research tonight, we must understand that present Nigerian constitution is written in plain, understandable English. Not Shakespearean English, not Dickensian English, not Chaucer English. If you did literature in um, good schools like German College Omaha, you know what I'm talking about. At least class three, you would have read Chaucer and a lot of um, plays by Shakespeare. A constitution of a country is written in such a way that any average person with fine grasp of the language is written in will be able to comprehend it. You don't will be able to comprehend it. You don't need any specialist training in law to understand a constitution. Now listen carefully. They've been arresting people in everywhere. Justice everybody Emmanuel everybody's invitation. Once they see IPAB they take you. But let us look at what the constitution says. Go to chapter 4, please. IV, chapter 4, IV, written fundamental human rights in the constitution of the zoo. 
And let us see what it says. This is what Bintan Yaku, John Toso, every judge in Nigeria should be defending because this is the constitution. Let us see if they're doing it. Because you ask them, uh, what is the job of the judiciary? The job of the judiciary is to interpret the law. <laughs> Look at the law here. There is no law greater than the constitution. It is the highest law. Let us see what law. Let us see what, or read what the law said about arresting people. And what should happen. Here we go. Chapter 5. This is a chapter for the mental rights. Uh, subsection 2. Any person who is arrested or detained shall have the right to remain silent or avoid answering any question until after consultation with a legal practitioner or any other person of his choice. Let me ask you, those of us who have been arrested, how many times did they ask you to call your lawyer or bring lawyer to you or ask you to make a phone call to tell your people, to tell your wife, your children that you're in detention? I said, how many people? But that is what the law says. The police doesn't do this. And when you go to court and ask a judge to enforce this, to make the police do it, they will tell you no. Let me give you an example. If you are arrested in a civilized country, anywhere, I say civilized, anywhere in the world where they practice rule of law, once you go to court and say to the judge, um, Your Honor, I have something to say. Um, Your Honor, I have something to say. I was not allowed a phone call. I was not allowed to speak to my lawyer. Nobody was present when I was questioned. Your case will be dismissed there and then. And the police or whoever was holding you be held accountable. I said this there and then. Not tomorrow. Not, not uh, 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 in, in four, five, six months time. No. Ask yourself this question. When they bring people to you, to your court, Bintan Nyako, why don't you insist that since the extraction or confession or whatever nonsense they have concocted is not in the presence of their lawyer. Why do you allow the case to proceed when the position says it's against the law? Is it not very simple? Let me tell you what the law says again. This is the highest law in Nigeria that Bintan Yako should be uploading in her court. Any person who is out, any person who is arrested or detained, this is uh, subsection 3 of the constitution any or uh, under the chapter on human rights chapter 4 is human rights please go there you will see it any person who is arrested or detained shall be informed in writing within 24 hours and in a language that he understands of the facts and grounds for his arrest and detention come on my woman and the man only for alpha and four years they keep asking what have i done what am i doing here nobody's talking to me They'll tell you, oh, shut up, my friend. And you take the person to court. And the person is trying to draw the attention of Bintan Nyeko. I have been in detention for four years. I did nothing wrong. Nobody wrote to me to inform me in writing what I did wrong. They'll tell, uh, take him back. Or DSS will apply for adjournment. And you'll be taken back to DSS custody. And the, the judge will rise and say, Oh, as the court pleases, my lord, my lord, as the court pleases, my lord, my lord, my lord. Look at anyone, my lord. Look at what they're doing to human beings. Let us look at subsection four. Any person, this is the law of Nigeria. Any person who is arrested or detained in accordance with subsection 1c of this section shall be brought before a court of law within a reasonable time. Everybody is entitled to appear before a court of law. Why is it that justice today hasn't been taken to any court? Why is it that Emmanuel has not been taken to any court? Why is it that we have IPOB family members, our people from a jump from Ogoni in DSS custody? They have not seen the inside of a courtroom when the constitution of the country says you must, not you will, or when you feel like it, or when DSS feels like it. The law says you must. And do you know why the law says you must? It is to stop the lives of Jubail. Anarchists to stop dictators. Anarchists to stop dictators from making life intolerable for law-abiding citizens. That is why. And now listen very carefully to what the law says again. Any person who is arrested, listen carefully, please. This is the crux of I have three things I want to preach tonight. This is one of them. Two is coming. 
you must listen attentively. If you have anybody in custody in Nigeria, if you have anybody in any prison, in any cell, in any military barracks, anywhere in Nigeria, I am giving you free legal advice. Courtesy of the Constitution law. It is the highest law in Nigeria. There is no other law that can supersede this very law until it is amended. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard about Fifth Amendment, Second Amendment in America. Once you change a law in the Constitution, you must amend the Constitution. And the legislation will say, and the legislation will say, amendment to constitution. So this law is valid till uh, Monday morning. And listen carefully. It's for free. And I want to prove to the whole world how evil and wicked Nigerian judges are, especially Bintan Yako and her group. Listen to what the law says here. If you are not presented before a judge, a court of law within two months, this is subsection 4a of the constitution. Go to chapter 5, fundamental human rights. You will see it there. Subsection 4a, it says, if you are not presented within or before a court of law, two months from the date of your arrest or detention, in the case of a person who is in custody or is not entitled to bail, let us assume you have committed one heinous crime and you're not entitled to bail. All that nonsense, the judge come and say, eh, is not, is generally not bailable. It's bunkum. Look at the constitution, what it says. A judge, look at the constitution, what it says. A judge will sit in a court of law and say, oh, the crime you committed is not a bailable offense. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? A judge in a court of law will say the offense you committed is not bailable. Let us hear what the constitution says about this. Section 4 is there now. Go and, go and look at it. Two months from the date of your arrest or detention, even if you're not entitled to bail, or three months from the date of your arrest or detention, in the case of a person who was previously released on bail, once you spend two months in custody without trial, my dear brother or sister, my dear policeman, DSS officer, justice, magistrate, lawyer, your constitution says that the person is entitled to automatic bail. When Elena San argued this very point before John Soho, do you know what the stupid judge said? Uh, I, I'm relying my judgment on Akaja. But in this same constitution, it says that this constitution is supreme. Supreme document of the land. Supreme number one document of the land. I, I rely on Akaja. I rely on the constitution of Nigeria. As badly written as it is. Anybody who is in prison custody including Justice Uday, Emmanuel, all IPOB family members, those held when we were rallying for Trump's victory. They should be granted bail automatically. That is what the Constitution says. Constitution of Nigeria. That a judge should be upholding. But you come to court and you say to Bintan Yego, they are not upholding. No, leave them. Is the deal? No, leave them. Is the deal? Is the state security services? They can't please. A judge may hold on a coin. You may who leave talking. Whereas the law is written down in black and white, nobody should spend two months in detention without trial, or else you must release them. This is to stop the likes of the cabal of Fulani. Buhari, when he was alive, and now Jubil al Sudani, from locking up his enemies. Do you think that you put that uh, study constitution is mad? Go and do your research tonight. Written law started from Mesopotamia. Intelligent people. Because when we write it down, <laughs> one full and a cow cannot come and change it for overnight. No, it's written down. You can't change it now. Can you change this law? The answer is no. That is the zoo for you. That is the zoo for you. And um, uh, and um, uh, I'm giving this lecture for free this night that all of you may understand that uh, we be friends, we mean well. For, I want everybody to be developed. But stay on your own. Let me start on my own. Because you're contaminating my sense of reasoning. Your stupidity is clouding my sense of judgment. I can't reason very well when I'm surrounded by idiots. 
That is why I surround myself with the very finest men and women you have. People who can reason, people who can think. That is why IPOB is preeminent in the whole world. I said number one. Can some of you feel the, the vibe of Biafra coming? I've not said anything. Can't you feel it yourselves? Everywhere. It's Biafra everywhere. Don't you understand that? We must continue to do this very work. If somebody is in detention for two months, <laughs> a, a judge will come. Hey, it's not my uh, final habeas corpus. I'm not talking about the matter. What is your money? On one, on one, you see. On one, sir. On one, you see. On one, sir. On one, sir. On one, sir. The law says you mu must must release that person. You're asking me to file habeas corpus. A judge. That is to tell you that they're all in it together. Because the more they're holding him, the more Dambanza is, is collecting 20,000 naira every blessed day to say they're feeding people. Uh, uh, the judge will get her, her own court and go to Dubai on holidays. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let us look at subsection 6 of the same, this is um, page, I think this, this is now, now is the page 21 of the Constitution. Subsection 6, it says here, any person who is unlawfully arrested or detained shall be entitled to compensation and public apology from the appropriate authority. Somebody should please ask Bintan Nyako. Why, as a judge, she did not insist? You know that Brad Chimes says she won. You know Brad Chimes is one of my uh, co-defendants. Yes. He was awarded 4 million naira damages. Uyo High Court. Binta Yoko came to her court and quashed it. But that's what the law says. Because we were asking, where is Brad Chimese? Where is, where is Brad Chimese? Where is he? We found him in Uyo. Arrested, no charge, nothing. A judge in Uyo said, this is against the law. The constitution said you should have brought him earlier. Because of that, I'm fining you. Or I'm awarding 4 million naira compensation. Binta Yoko said no. DSS did not pay that 4 million naira. Instead, Bintan Yoke came back and collected 10 million naira from Brad Chimes, of course, from IPOB, to release Brad Chimes on bail. And she's a judge, a Leonard senior. Maybe tomorrow she'll be the chief judge or, or the promoter to appeal court. These are the judges you have in Nigeria. The law says if you arrest somebody and detain them illegally for two months, you don't bring them to court, you don't discharge them, you don't grant them bail, they are entitled to compensation and an apology. A judge, a fellow judge in federal high court, you know, said, determined that Brad Chimese, said, determined that Brad Chimese issue had been detained illegally for over two months without trial. Therefore, I word by Tim is here, 4 million naira against DSS. The DSS pay, no, Bintan Yako came back and collected 10 million from Brad to be, to set him free. Sorry, to grant him bail, not even set him free. <laughs> that is, uh, uh, Fulani, you see, Fulani judiciary. When I say I don't want to be part of Nigeria, people don't understand it. I am taking Biafra with me, people, because they don't reason like human. Damn it, it's reality. I don't want to come. She allowed the sham charge of conspiracy and treasonable felony to be brought before her court because she is doing her bit for the fraudulent one Nigeria. And now the issue of my bail revocation. Very, very important. We look at it. Very, very important. We look at it very quickly. You know the hype around my bail. You see how clever they are with Yoruba newspapers. Instead of them talk about the attempted assassination, the death of 28 men. It's about Aparibe and Shotis. These are journalists that should. I want to prove that every every layer in Nigeria is evil. All of them in the whole place is thinking. What concerns a journalist is not to investigate the matter to say, but where did the army go to kill a man who is a word of God? No, 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 no. He's about Abaribe Bell, Abaribe Bell. He's going to 300 for feet shorty. These are journalists. But of course, mostly Yoruba. Because they don't like Biafra. We recall what happened with the hype around the issue of my shorties. How Binta Nyako played up the responsibility of the shorties and downplayed my assassination attempt. 
as if it was um, Abaribe and the rest of the Shotis that called Buratai and his men to invade my home. We all know it was um, certain Igbo men in Ohanes Zendi, of course. Uh, they have rewarded him, rigging him back into power, and he's dancing. Dancing. Uh, I'm serving Fulani. Uh, the Warren Chiefs did that. Uh, where are they today? When the white man came, the one chief can do no wrong. Anything he does, oh yeah, uh, go ahead. Okugu, Chief Okugu that was responsible for the death of our mothers in 1929. They protected him. So what people are saying is, 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 is nothing new. He, uh, he's running to Israel thinking that, no, he, he's, there's a number and he knows that. There's a number and he knows that. Look at Omahi and Obi, you know, and a few others that have actively sought my assassination. Bintan Yako never mentioned them. He said, yeah, Paribe, bring him down the can, bring him here, bring him. Ah, Paribe, na come back and I'm going to be a boy and a beer. But one man, you're a born asset. And I can't bring him. He said, are you, are you well at all? What type of judge are you? I, I, I need to see him. You must bring him. I, I gave him to you. And now, back in October, I found him. Now, you come and bring him. No, no. Can you believe how this people reason? They came to my house to kill me. And Yoruba media, they have the temerity to say, uh, Namde, he can't hear anyway, he's a coward. If you're a strong man, why didn't you come alone to arrest me? Why did you bring Air Force, Navy, uh, road safety, uh, mobile police, army? Every, every regiment in Jaffa land was drafted to come to my house. If you're strong, you people are not ashamed of yourselves. You bring army and helicopter to come to the house of one man. Ah, uh, man. Ah, uh, me and you, who is a coward? If you're welcome to, why can't brother come on his own to arrest me? useless set of idiots you brought air force you brought navy you brought army you brought police to the house of one unarmed man come back now let's fight why can't you come on your own why can't you come let's fight this UG it is their lives where in South Africa Killing the children of those that fought for apartheid to go. That's how stupid black people are. Useless, insane. They cannot reason very well. Yo, come back and go to prison now. We are Biafrans. And believe you me, we are not black Africans. We are Biafrans. We are Biafrans. And Biafra will be different. And the world knows it. And that is why they don't want Biafra to come. Because they know Biafra will be different. Everybody knows this. For a fact. Let us look at what this new constitution says about sending a battalion of cowardly. These are cowards that came to my house. Ngokoko. Come alone now. Ngokoko. You brought a battalion. Helicopter gunship on top of my house. Two jets to bomb my village. As they did in Odi. The constitution of the zoo, chapter 4, the same fundamental rights, chapter 3, 1, says that every person has a right to life. This is the constitution of the zoo. And no one shall be deprived intentionally of his life, save in execution of the sentence of a court in respect of a criminal offense of which has been found guilty in Nigeria. In other words, Bratai and the words, Bratai and the army, every helicopters, the ships, every the gunships they brought to my house, Air Force, Navy, all the people that came to my house to kill me should not be there unless they were sent by a court of law. That is what the constitution says. Chapter fundamental rights, it is in the constitution of Nigeria. Now ask yourself this question Who sent Bratai and Nigerian army men to come to my house? Who sent the Air Force to come to my house? The police, who sent them? You cannot come to kill somebody unless a court gives you permission to do so. So what are you doing in my house? Who sent you? That is the question that Binta Nyako doesn't want to answer in her court. That is why anytime we bring it up, oh, you say, where is the shot? Is bring me Nam the can. Where is the And now I'm going to like, I'm going to go to in a judge. They come to kill me. They came to kill me. They came to kill me. My brothers and my parents and my men. Bintan Yako, even as a mother, you are fighting for the life of your son. 
who is under EFCC investigation, and your husband. That army came and killed other people's, other women's children. Even as a mother, you are not touched. That's how wicked and evil you are. Idiots who touch. Uh, 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 he should come and fight. Uh, Where is he in Israel? Let him come and. <laughs> oh dear. I said that I'm trying to compare myself to Jesus, but I won't say anything. We must continue. Who sent Buratai and the army men to my house? When the constitution says is the wrong, you must be sent by a court. And I'm beginning to suspect that it was being Tanya that sent them. Tanya that sent them. Because you cannot come to kill somebody without court order. Or else you will hold whoever broke this law in contempt of your court. But she will not do it. She will not do it. Let us remember this. The charge number FHC, ABJC, and this is my, this is the case of, um, of, of the, of the zoo against my shorties. We all remember on the 14th day of November 2018, Abaribe and the rest of the shorties went to court. Binta Yako asked them to come to court to show cause, to tell her why the bond should not be forfeited. You asked me to come to court. Come to court and tell me why you should not forfeit the bond. Because you just you stood shorty for none, the colonel. This is according to court records. I have the case number here. FHC stroke ABJ stroke CR stroke 383 stroke 383 stroke 2015. It is there. At the end of that proceedings, Without hearing from her body, no, 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 bring him down. If you can't bring him, she gave her ruling. What was Binta Nyako's ruling on the 14th day? Listen, this is part of this broadcast is very, very important. So you understand how evil the woman is. She said, on the 14th day of November 2018, this is her ruling in her own court. The shorties have still not produced a defendant. Then she asked them to come to court to tell her why they cannot produce me. But this is her ruling. Because she never gave them any chance to explain. She went on straight away. The shorties still have still not produced the defendant. In the interim, the court hereby orders that the shorties, in the interim, deposit the bail bond in court within two months from court, within two months from today, for six months, or the bail will be forfeited. Some of you may have read from the running papers how they reported it. I to go to jail. Uh, everybody to forfeit their day. But this judge, you asked them to come to court to tell you why I am not in court. You did not listen to them. You went ahead to say, you have not produced him. But you asked them to come to court to show cause why they cannot produce him. Now you're saying they cannot produce him. And you're a judge. You're justice. She never can know you didn't. The motion pending, she continues her uh, Binta's ruling. The motion pending will be heard on 28th, 3, 2018. This one, this one that happened a few days, uh, the day that she revoked my bail. She adjourned Abaribe, the Shoki mat, uh, matter to the 28th of March, 2018. Not my case. Not my case. The Shotis. Shotis. This was done without hearing the reason why I was not in court. All Binta Nyeko wanted was the 300 million that Abaribe and Co would have paid her, or paid to her Fulani people. So they'll be looking for more oil. Maybe now in, they'll be looking for oil in Katsina, in Daura. Because they're looking for oil everywhere. And one of the idiots came out, they said that they'll keep looking for, they'll keep burning our money in the, in the, in the, in the report of the zoo until they find oil. And what 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 you people endure? I don't know how how you manage to sleep at night. Some of you, I don't know. All Binta Yeko wanted was the money. Our oil and gas that fueled ignorance in the north is not enough. They wanted to collect yet more money from us, from the people they gave only twenty pounds after the war. From the ruling, it was from the ruling, it was clear that all Binta and Yeko wanted was the money. The same way she forced us IPOB to cough up 40 million naira. Some of you don't know this. I've said it before. We paid 40 million naira. Cash bond, cash. 
And he kept asking, but what did we do that we are paying you cash? To be free on bail. Okay, what did, which crime did we commit? We shall come to that later on. We paid them this money. It's in their bank or they have shared it as usual. They shared this money before they released to us. Madubuku, Ishinwa, Omudiwe, and the one we see, David. Ask yourselves this question. How many Boko Haram, ISIS in West Africa, Fulani headsmen, Miyeti Allah, the Fulani highway robber kidnappers you have now in the north, how many of them have you asked to pay cash bond before in your court, in all the Fulani courts? Check the enormity of the crime they commit. Genocide. That's genocide. That's what they're committing in the north, Fulani headsmen. But because you are Fulani, Compare that with what you claim Nam the Kano and his co-defendants did, which is to ask for self-determination as contained in your own laws. You're asking me to pay. Asking IPOB to pay you 40 million before you can release people on bail. That is a judge or justice for you in Nigeria. Let us go back to Bintan Yako. She adjourned the case for the shortest to the 28th of March. For hearing of the pending motions only, as clearly ordered by the court in the shorty proceedings of 14 11 2018. In November, she adjourned the case to hear about, uh, to hear from him, basically to come and take money from her baby and the rest. She didn't know that we are, we are more intelligent than them. It is the rule now, listen carefully, please. Where a judge in Nigerian court messed herself up, Britannia. It is the rule in every court of law in the world, not just in Nigeria, that both the court and the parties are bound by the record of proceedings. In a case before the court, but as we shall see, a sitting judge in this case, Britannia, whose duty it is to uphold the law, was in this very case acted in a manner that could only be described as judicial banditry, highway robber in a court. That's who Bintan Yako is. Judicial banditry by ambushing a defense lawyer in court. No judge does that nonsense in ambushing a defense lawyer in court. No judge does that nonsense in anywhere in the world. To ambush a law a defense lawyer is not done anywhere. It's an impeachable offense. This is the legal equivalent of Fulani headsmen on Adamawa Highway while laying unsuspecting motorists. That's what Bintan Yako did in her court. When this case for the shorties came up for hearing last week, 28th of March, 2019, as directed by Bintan Nyako on the 14th of November of last year, we argued, of course, in court, the lawyers argued, and quite successfully, that we filed an appeal against a decision, and that the appeal had been duly entered. The appeal filed by Abaribe and the rest of my shorties is so simple that if you go through it, you would understand that Bintan Yoko has no intention of following her own court rules. She abandoned every rule to do with fair hearing. All she wanted, all she wanted was to advance full and interest against Biafra. Let me also say this night and for the hearing public that there are three stages in forfeiture proceedings. Because I see shorty for you doesn't mean if you don't appear in court, I will go to jail or I will I will lose my bond. No. The law provides for three stages in forfeiture proceedings. Do you know why? Because they anticipated that in a place like the zoo, what happened to me could happen to anybody else. You can give somebody on bail to somebody as, uh, as shorty and you go behind and you kill that person and you ask them to police the person. The person must come before the court to explain why he or she cannot produce the person that they stood shorty for. That is why you have what is called forfeiture proceedings. But in all these cases, of Abari come, you lose your this, you do this. Have you heard Bintan Yako mention forfeiture proceedings? The answer is no. Big feature proceedings? The answer is no. Because she knows once they go into forfeiture proceedings, uh -huh. You think they're not clever? They're very clever, but we are more clever than we are the Afrans and they are Fulani. We are more sensible than them. The most important of which is reason to show cause. That is something called reason. Tell me why. She said it before. Tell me why I should not order for the forfeiture of, of the of the bond. Show cause. When Abribe came to show cause, she would not listen. He said she gave her ruling. 
This reason to show cause allows the shorties to present their evidence before a court as to why they cannot produce a defendant. Shockingly, Binta Nyako never wanted to hear the reason why my shorties were unable to produce me. She jumped two critical stages in the judicial process to demand that my shorties fulfill their bond and was be committed to detention without following what the law says should be done. Says should be done. Three stages. She jumped to the first two and went to the three, thinking we are full and we will forget. Let's debate. If you're still standing after two minutes, I know you're going to school. But they will not last up to one minute, I assure you. I don't care who you are. Isn't it like a Come like me. You come out. I'm not writing nonsense on that fake account on Facebook. Come and debate me. Come and like Umokoko. Binta Nyako never followed. What should be done? This is the simple matter before the appeal court. We want the appeal court to say to them, Binta Nyako did not follow the stages she's supposed to follow. That's all. And they said, okay, yeah, bring it, we'll hear it. That's all. The law, the, it's called law. Law says there are three Three stages. You cannot this. You cannot jump one and two and go. To, do you think he's a, he's a he's a cattle republic? You're dealing with cattle. Now my question is this: to all of you practicing law in Nigeria, I, I, in all honesty, I feel sorry for the very brilliant ones amongst you. The question is this: Is it right for a judge to abandon laid down procedures in bail bond forfeiture without being heard? You can now understand why she did not insist that Akja gave her the right to proceed with collecting 300 million from my shorties. Or was jailed. She can no longer put Akja. It's very clear. You are a judge. You are not following the process of law. If you as a judge don't follow, how do you expect Jubril Asudani to follow? How do you expect them to obey the law? Fulani, obey the law. Who told you that? Come on, law. For Never they will not. Because it's not in them. On that 28th day of March 2019, Bintanyago had no choice than to grant Abaribe's application for state of proceedings or execution of her order, I must get it right, and consequently, uh, consequently adjourned the shorty proceedings, Sindai. They call it Sindai, but it's Sindai. Pending the outcome of the appeal court hearing. After adjourning the hearing, we don't answer, after adjourning the hearing of the shorty proceedings, Binta Nyako, without warning, jumped into my trial there and then. No, look at how many laws this woman has broken. One judge. How many laws she has broken? She jumped into my case. No notice was given to my lawyers as demanded by court rules. That there will be a hearing. Can you imagine a judge ambushing a defense lawyer? He's on head of. He's on head of. A supposed senior judge for that matter, who in all probability should be defending the due process of law. If a senior judge in Nigeria can have such little or no regard for the laws and rules of the court, how much more an uneducated imposter from Sudan, Jubila Sudani, how do you expect him to, to, to obey the law? You know that one being paraded by the Zeus that some of you said you voted for in APC. That nonsense there is bad. Oh dear me. Black people. Black. No wonder it took uh, uh, Europeans to end slavery in Africa. It took intervention of white people to end apartheid in South Africa. It was a white man who ended slavery in America. Yeah, yeah, uh, when can we listen for ourselves? Black people, when will you ever reason for yourselves? No sotter on your No sotter on your Dara. Oh, that's all you know. That's gossip, gossip. That's all you do. To reason like a human being, you can't. In a matter as grave as murder, attempted murder, and assassination attempt, the prosecutor called Labaran, merely applied orally to Binta Nyako for a revocation of my bail and the issuance of a bench warrant against me. Oral, not written or oral application. 
there and then that's a uh, take away justice fast fast you know the, as you go for fast food this is fast justice all of a sudden they're in a hurry this was the same bintan Nyako who on countless occasions said that she presides over a court of records i have all that she said when i was in court which means that all applications must be in writing for reference purposes she said that in her court i run a court of record i run a court of records i need every application in writing all of a sudden because it is about revocation of bail they want to stop my diplomatic moves around the world let us try and do something to tell interpol to stop him that's why she did it a, a judge in the court of law equity and justice fairness none all sacrificed. Let us stop and the cannon. That's all. That's why she rushed. Suddenly, she agreed to hear the application for my bail revocation orally without it being written down because she does not want the nonsensical application for my bail revocation to be challenged by my lawyers. She doesn't want it. Despite the fact that my lawyer informed Bintan Yako in her court that the issue relating to bail revocation was not scheduled to be heard on the 28th of March 2019, Bintan Yako, a judge, refused to listen. To listen. Not minding that what she was doing was against the rules and procedure in her own court. <laughs> but they're all Fulani and they can do whatever they like. They can go to Sudan and, uh, after all, a Fulani president died. They went to Sudan and brought an actor. Did you do anything that says no? You're about once twenty twenty three, which they can never get anywhere. They can never get it. They can never. So anything, they, it doesn't matter where the, once you they say you're Buhari, that's it. Yoruba journalists came out and we are defending Jubril. They know he's Jubril. That's how evil they are. Fulani can do whatever they like. Britain handed over Nigeria to them. Britain gave them Nigeria as a gift. <laughs> they can do uh, once the oil is flowing, they can do whatever they like. This was exactly the same nonsense, exactly the same nonsense that happened with IPOB prescription. They never went to court for an open trial. They went to Kafrati behind our back and applied for, for banning of IPOB, tagging them through this group. Within four minutes, it was granted. We have been in court for nearly two years, asking them to bring this case before a court, before a panel of judges. Let us prove to the world that we're not a terrorist group. They keep adjournment. They keep adjourning it. Adjournment after adjournment. Adjournment. Do you know the case was adjourned again to October? Hoping that they will use the Beromudi Ways confession, uh, 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 hoping to use the Beromudi Ways confession to convict anybody. So when they come in October, they will say, Yes, IPAB is a terrorist group. After all, this Fulani judge, Bintan Yako, have ruled that or determined that you're a terrorist group. That's what they want to do. Group. That's what they want to do. For two, it took them four minutes to tag IPOB a terrorist group. It's taking them over two years. To come and hear our defense to that nonsensical judgment or ruling. That's what they did. Do you know who did it? His name is um, Justice Abdul Kafrati. Abdul Kafrati was the man that killed Kensal Uwa. He was the chairman of the panel that condemned Kensal Uwa to death. And they rewarded him by making him the chief justice of the Federal High Court. All those uh, pot bellied people. These are the people who should be fighting. You can see that Binta Nyako is taking the part of previously compromised government judges in during, in during the building of Asarok. That's a fact. Despite all the pleas to Binta Nyako to grant my lawyer's time to respond, she refused. Uh, but it had been, had it been the, the prosecution, she would say, okay, take your time. She will oblige them. How many times have the persecutor? You all can remember. They come to court. Eh, my lord, we brought the, the witnesses. We brought them, but they're not here today. Give us some time. She will say, okay, okay, I'll give you time. Ejiofor asked for 24 hours. 
to present written submission? The woman said no. Unbelievable. Benta Yeko did not afford me the opportunity to be heard in her court because justice and fairness demands that the prosecution submit a written application demanding for my bail revocation, not oral, which uh, would have been met uh, with a response from us. But it is clear that Benta Yeko did not want the atrocities the army committed in my home to be a matter of public record. Benta Yeko grew up in the barracks. Her father was a major general in the army. You don't know that? She doesn't want her court to be used to showcase the evil and the atrocity of the Nigerian army. You don't know that? That is why she doesn't want it. That was why she went for oral application, not written. Because once it is written, a four and the team will respond. Once they respond, all that they did will become a matter of public record and referenceable. She didn't want it. But I'm telling people anyway. I'm telling you. Because that is the zoo for you. What Bintan Yeko cleverly did by ambushing my defense team is to make sure the issue of the attempt to kill me will not be mentioned in her court. This is the height of judicial injustice and of judicial injustice and profession of justice. I am a victim of assassination attempt, attempted murder. If you don't know, a victim of attempted murder, mind you, by the state of Nigeria. One thing that has been established is that this order that Bintan Yoko made is unconstitutional. Listen carefully. Bintan Yoko insisting that she would take that oral application without any response from my lawyer is unconstitutional. The fact that she mentioned a case which wasn't listed in court on a particular day is against the constitution of Nigeria. We are proceeding to reveal all to all of you. The order was not only unconstitutional, but was made in contravention of common law legal procedure. Common law legal procedure rules. I ask you to download common law. Please click on it and see what common law is all about. Bintan Nyako lied when she said there was nothing before her court concerning me and why I, I wasn't able to come to her court. She conveniently forgot that I deposed to an affidavit in Israel and filed a case. The suit number is FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 908 slash 2017, which is the matter we brought before her between myself and the chief of staff, Oburata, that led soldiers to my house to kill me. In that suit, the reason why I cannot attend to her court was well spelled out. My deposition was duly sworn before a notary public institute of Israel. Official, a copy of the said sworn statement my lawyers filed before Bintan Yako. That is my statement where I was Bintan Yako. That is my statement where I was telling Bintan Yako what happened. But she came to her own court and lied that she had nothing before her. And she's a judge. Or uh, justice. It is a fact on court records in front of Bintan Yako that the Nigerian army came to my home to kill me. I lost 28 men. At my home, Nisema on the 17th day of September 2017, in a murderous raid that left many more injured. 28 unarmed and defenseless persons were shot to death without any court order. Many were abducted and have not been seen till today. But some idiots, perhaps full of their own ignorance, are somehow talking about my arrest as if the army is not culpable. Let us see what the Supreme Court said about a court adhering to its uh, schedule, uh, schedule, as Bintan Yako ignored. It is called court's own published case list and how that should be treated. In other words, Bintan Yako by law should not have called up my case on a day that she did, she did not adjourn my case for hearing. Ambush. Judicial banditry. Many Nigerians don't know the meaning of common law, but tonight I will, I, will, I, will, I will educate you. 
or why it is said that Nigeria operates a common law system. So, for the purposes of greater clarity this night, we shall first acquaint ourselves with the meaning of common law. Common law practice. You must know what it is. Before we go on to expose the ignorance of the Nigerian judiciary as encapsulated in the pitiable performance of Bintan Nyaku. Let us look at the future of, and the meaning of common law. What is common law, I ask? Listen carefully. Listen carefully. This is according to Encyclopedia uh, Wikipedia. Not Encyclopedia Britannica. I'm sure they even said the same thing as well. In law, that is common law, also known as judicial precedent or judgment law or case law, is that is that body of law, listen carefully, derived from judicial decisions of courts and similar tribunals. That is why when you go to court, you will hear them recite or refer to a case between uh, a bureau and a commission of police in Okun State, determined by either court of appeal or Supreme Court. Common law is a precedent law. In other words, you are guided by the ruling of a superior court or court of concurrent uh, jurisdiction on a particular case. Black's Law Dictionary 10th Edition defined it. In fact, went ahead to differentiate between common law jurisdictions and civil law. This is where the company in the zoo. How, this is where the company in the zoo. How my call a lawyer now and ask the lawyer. What do you practice in Nigeria? I will tell you, uh, my brother, I don't know. They practice common law in Nigeria. But what Bintan Yako is doing is civil law, which is more like Sharia law. Where you are, you, if you are accused of any crime, you have to prove that you're not guilty. The burden of proof is not on the state. It's on you to prove you're not guilty. It is called civil law, not common law. Nigeria practices precedent law, common law. Understand the distinction between the two. Common law systems place great weight on court decisions. The grand government does not understand the transition, neither does the adjudic either. They copy what is written by the white man, the adult, big words, big grand, put it into Sharia terrorist laws. And call it in a transition. Even to carry it out, they cannot do it. When you have big titles, one would think that they have something extraordinary upstairs. A judge, this, appeal court, chief justice, deputy chief justice, and what other nonsense they answer or call themselves. It's a very big pity uh, that we are uh, before and during trial. Examples abound of media houses allowing themselves to be used as unwilling agents of persecution. Bintan Yako employs this method. Whenever any evidence emerges in her court that is likely to damage the government of the bridge, she will quickly impose a gagging order. Don't speak to the media. I don't want, don't, nobody should speak to the media. But the day she revoked my bail, anybody can talk to the media. And uh, she's a consistent judge, isn't she? This same media was used to give the misleading impression that those of us standing trial committed a triable offense when that is not the case. Bita Nyako's revocation of my bail without affording me the opportunity of fair hearing suggests her complicity in the vicious military operation that killed many of my men and nearly got me killed. A battalion of Nigerian army with support from the Air Force drawn from four regiments stationed across the east should not have been sent, should not have been sent to kill me because it is against their own constitution unless authorized by a court of law. The lethal military oppression levied against my home and my person was so notorious that the whole world had notice of it. How come Bintan Yako is claiming she did not have judicial notice of it? When a case was brought before her court, citing the military invasion of my home and the death of 28 innocent citizens, the Nigerian army was on record in Bintan Yako's court as having said that they were pursuing a truck laden with ammunition into my compound where the truck exploded. How then can you exonerate them from being in my compound? When they admitted they were there. 
This laughable tale is in a sworn testimony before Bintan Yaku. Do you know this ridiculous claim by the army was not given a mention in Bintan Yaku's ruling? Even though the army admit though the army admitted to being in my house, Bintan Yaku did not find anything wrong with it. The Nigerian army, by their own admission, and doubt of the Nigerian presidency, came to my house to kill me. How will any judge what has solved not take judicial notice of that? If I were dead by now, what would she say? And some of the idiots will write, rest in peace, and that will be the end of it. This UG. I remain eternally grateful to my shorties for standing by me all through my travails, trials, and tribulations. It therefore smacks of judicial persecution for Bintan Yaku to claim that my shorties have withdrawn their so shortyship. It's a lie. A nation becomes an irredeemable zoo when even her judiciary joins in the persecution of citizens. Bintan's bench warrant against me makes the judiciary in Nigeria complicit in the persecution that has been levied against IP, has been levied against IPOB since 2015. In March last year, a continental human rights court restrained the Nigerian army, the Nigerian government, from further persecution of IPOB family members, including my humble self, till date, Nigerian government is yet to obey that very order. The bench warrant against me is merely academic. It will surely be ignored by an international legal and diplomatic order that has voiced its disapproval of what is happening to IPOB in Nigeria. We now come to the course of the matter this very evening. And I'm sure why some people are here. It is called the principles of no punishment without law. It is in the Nigerian Constitution, section 36, on page 24 of your constitution, of the zoo. Listen carefully what the Constitution of Nigeria says and why IPOB is right. Sometimes I say to people, when you have Umwe Flef, Umwe Prince talking, ignore them, they know nothing, their brains are in. I want to prove it tonight. Do you know that we have been right all along? IPOB has been right all along from day one. Everything we are doing is right. And I thank heavens that some of you have remained steadfast till this very day. Section 36 of the Zoo Constitution on page 24. Subject as otherwise provided by this Constitution, a person shall not be convicted of a criminal offense, listen carefully, unless that offense is defined and penalty, therefore, is prescribed in a written law. And in this subsection, in this subsection, a written law refers to an act of the National Assembly or a law of a state, any subsidiary legislation or instrument under the provision of a law. We continue. This section 36 of the Constitution, subsection 12, which some of you have and always refer to it, prohibits, you, you know the meaning of the word prohibition, it stops Bintan Yako. He stops the Attorney General of the Zoo. He stops Jubril, Abakiari, Dambanza, all the rest of them. It prohibits any trial. In other words, the Constitution of Nigeria prohibits my trial and that of my men. Or conviction of anybody in a Nigerian court of an offense not written down. Now listen again, please. Now listen again, please. The offense they are charging me with is not written in law in Nigeria. Because treasonable felony must have ingredients supporting it. If had, when Jubril, when Buhari was arrested in 19, that was 1985. When did Bobangida overthrow? It was 85, wasn't it? It was 85. When the dead Buhari now decayed, rotten in, in a Saudi grave. When Buhari overthrew Shagari in 83 and was himself overthrown in 1985, he committed treasonable felony. Buhari committed treasonable felony. 
That is the broad definition of it. Then underneath, what did he do to commit it? He used soldiers and arms to overwhelm and overrun a sitting president who is Sheikh Shagari. Understand how the law works. Not when you, not when you remember me there. Yeah, this is from you're dancing up and down like uh, somebody in an all one day party who is uh, simply drunk. Understand it. Reasonable felony must sit on something. What is that crime? In my own case, they call this a session. Bear that in mind because I'm coming there very shortly. Reasonable felony is defined only under section 41. I asked my deputy and Amaka to distribute Nigerian criminal code. He's there. So you can see it tonight. That I should not be in court. Madubu, Benjamin Madubu should not be in court. Bretton Mezeishi should not be in court. David Wanwisi should not be in court. Chidebola Wudiwe should not be in court. No IPOB family member should be in any court in Nigeria because we have not committed any crime known to law. In fact, what, in fact, what we are doing is supported by Nigerian law. It is here. And I'll prove it to you tonight. I know it is very lengthy, this very program. After all, before I used to do three hours uh, program at a stretch. So you must bear with me. You must listen to this. My contention tonight is that I have not committed any offense triable under Nigerian law. Bintan Yeko can attest to that. Because treasonable felony is defined only under section 41 of the criminal code which you have. There are four definitions of treasonable felony and none of the definitions mention cessation or trying to carve out a nation from Nigeria as a crime. If you remember when I was arrested, Yoruba media went to market about my charges. Try your cessation is a crime. People are so stupid. The mention of Biafra is a crime. Who told you that? It is, if it is a crime, why is it not in the laws of Ne? In the penal code, criminal code of Ne? In the penal code, criminal code of Nigeria. It's not there. Pursuing Biafra is not a crime in Nigeria. It is not there. Cessation is not a crime. Self determination is not a crime. And nobody it. What IPOP is doing is legal. It is correct. Even before Nigerian courts. We must continue. Let me perfectly explain this. Nigerians, Nigerians, their courts, judges and some legal practitioners are ignorant of this same constitution of Nigeria they derive their authority from. I am not doing this expose tonight in the hope that Nigerians will do anything about their plight. No, 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 no. They are blacks. They won't do anything. From time immemorial, we don't do anything. I am doing it that humanity may know that we Biafrans are civilized, law-abiding people. IPOB is a simple. IPOB is a civilized movement and law-abiding because we understand and respect the law. Even the laws of Nigeria. Fulani in a billion years can never submit to the rule of law. Their judges are ignorant of the law. Therefore, those of you using the name of Nigeria, Using the name of Biafra, I must say, to work for Fulani, encroachment into our land, or who think by turning to informants and agents of the caliphate, you can demoralize the weak amongst us. Let me tell you this tonight. You are wasting your time. Create as many fake Facebook accounts as you like. Issue misleading press statements as much as you like. One thing is guaranteed. Unless you mention Nam the Kano or IPOB, nobody will read anything you write or anything you say. That's how powerful we are. Now you understand it. That is the level of stranglehold we have over you. Un Unless you mention a name, the canon or IPOB, nobody wants to read what you're writing. That is power and might that we exercise over you. Unless you mention my name, you are nobody. If you like, try and see. Nigerians and their government does not understand their own laws. They copy and they paste. For us to further understand how hopeless Nigerian judges like Bintan Yako are, let us do some research on the Constitution and, and what it says about Biafra agitation for freedom. Now I want to prove to you that agitation for Biafra is legal within Nigerian laws. Not AU law. 
Not laws from UN, Nigerian law, Nigeria, inside Nigeria itself. Their law says, I can succeed if I want. Then why am I in court? Because I'm in court, because Binta Nyeko doesn't, she doesn't read the constitution. She has never read the constitution of Nigeria. I'm not sure she has. Of Nigeria. I'm not sure she has. And she's a judge. Let us proceed. Our focus is going to be on secession and self. Write it down. Secession and self-determination to prove to even a mad person. What that Biafra, what IPOB is doing, her joy is not a crime. Are you want it? Even a mad person living under Uju Eleba Bridge will know tonight that IPOB, what we represent and what we are doing is not a crime. I know I should have treated this very issue separately. Maybe I will at a later date as well. But I want to use tonight to lay down for the world to know how inept, corrupt, and ignorant Nigerian judges and their courts are. This landmark, landmark broadcast tonight is of historical importance and significance. And I've asked my deputy to make sure that it is placed on various media platforms for reference purposes because things can never be the same again. All of you, you have a copy of the constitution which you'll be looking at. If you amend the constitution, everybody knows about it. We must bear in mind at all times the supremacy of the constitution in all matters to do with the law in any country in the world. Chapter 6. The, go to the criminal code that was circulated. Chapter 6, section 41 of the criminal code, which defined the offense of treasonable felony, for which I and others have been charged for conspiring to commit. This is what it says. You must do, for you to be charged with treasonable felony, you must do one or all of the following. And now, as I'm reading it out, think of, I'm reading it out, think of IPOB and see if you committed any of these crimes. Now, any person who forms an intention to effect any of the following, that is to say, to remove during his time of office otherwise than by constitutional means, the president as the head of state of the federation and commander-in-chief of the armed forces thereof. In other words, did I start IPOB to remove Buhari then from office or was I doing it to create Biafra? I'm sure everyone knows the answer to that. Not to remove Buhari from office when he was alive, or to remove Jubail now, but to create Biafra. That's number one. Number two, to likewise remove, during his time of office, the governor of a state. Am I trying to remove any of the corrupt Awosa slaves, traitors we have in government houses? Or am I trying to create Biafra? To create Biafra. I wanted OKC to remove to throw the ballot box, not by fighting the bagger. Of course, I know that uh, the cabal will come to his rescue. It's been happening throughout history. It's nothing new to us. They will defend their informants anyway. They will defend the saboteurs in our land. They've, been, they've done, after all, Obama Biasika came back after betraying Ojibu, after the war, to become the governor of his central state. So uh, they have a history of rewarding saboteurs. It's not a, it's not a big deal. C is to levy war. This is principle felony. No, to levy war against Nigeria in order by force or constraint to compel the president to change his measures or counsels or in order to put any force or constraint upon or in, the, in order to intimidate or overrun any house of the National Assembly or any other legislature or legislative authority. Is that what we are looking to do in IPA? That's what we are looking to do in IPA. The answer is no, we just want to be Afra. A separate homeland for Biafran people not to take over any house of assembly. Now, ask yourself this question. Those people that invaded National Assembly and took and ran away with the mace, are they being tried for treason? The answer is no. But the law here says they should be tried for treason. You know, it's zoo now. They don't know their own laws, do they? D says to instigate any foreigner. Any motorcycle. Instigate which foreigner to come after which zoo? Is our interest not only in Biafra? From what we have read tonight, what the angry, what the 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 what 
the offense of treasonable felony means. Who in their right mind can accuse IPOB of having committed or planning to commit any of those? Now, on the basis of the above provisions which I've just defined, definitions which I've just defined, definitions which I've just read, preparation to secede, which is the ingredient, the catalyst, the trigger of all these things, they asked them, they said, okay, he wants to do this, to do the, okay, we understand. How was he preparing to do it? They said he wants to secede. That's what they said. And it's in my charge sheet, which they, everybody has it. You know, by media, they have it, but they won't publish it anymore after tonight, I'm sure. They charged me with preparations to secede. This is how they intimidate our people. They say, oh, to secede is a crime. No, it is not. Upon this secession have I been charged for conspiracy to secede, but this offense is not captured under the four definitions as mentioned above. It is not. It is not part of the criminal code. Secession is not. So the offense as charged, the offense I am as charged, the offense I am facing with my men is not known to any written law in Nigeria. That is why Binta Nyako doesn't want to hear the case of jurisdiction because she has no right to hear the case because the crimes we are being accused of does not exist in law. It's not written down. And the constitution of Nigeria says if it is not written down, you cannot be tried for it. Now do you see where they are running from the court? Do you understand now? Is it not very clear to everybody that what I'm doing is legal? But I'm going to prove it even more tonight. The time now is approximately seven minutes past nine p.m. here. You must bear with me. We must finish this before people used to ask me to stay on for eight, nine hours when we did the marathon broadcast. But tonight we must finish this very broadcast. It's very, very critical. Listen carefully. The charge. And my trial, and that of my men, is that of my men, is unconstitutional within the provisions of section 36, subsection 12 of the same zoo constitution, which says that subject as otherwise provided by the constitution, a person shall not be convicted of a criminal offense unless that offense is defined and the penalty therefore is prescribed in a written law. And in this subsection, a written law refers to an act of the National Assembly or law of the state. I'm asking you, go anywhere and check. Did anybody say in Nigerian law that secession is a crime? Or that mentioning Biafra is a crime? You will see there is none. So a lot of people have been acting under ignorance, under a spell of ignorance before we came. That is why I said before, anywhere we go, we bring light to it. We are IPOB, the very best of the best. I said the very best. You're not getting an IPOB, but you're a child of Lucifer. Nothing good shall ever come out of your life. I'm telling you the truth. Before heaven and this very earth. Oh, now, Bruno Cable. IPOB is, we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. Oh, Muchi make a Ganyabu. Oh, Muchi make a song. That is why all their plans against me can never work. And they know it. Now we are going to look at the laws from which I derive my authority to run IPOB, from which I derive my authority to ask for secession and to cut out Biafra from Nigeria. I have Nigerian law by my side, and tonight we are going to look at it. Leonard, I'm telling you. The mistake that most Jews and definitely Britain and Yoko make is to think that I am relying merely on UN Charter on the rights of the indigenous people or the African Charter on peoples and human rights. What they fail to understand is that I am relying on laws made by the National Assembly of Nigeria in 1983. <laughs> Binta Nyako is trying me and my men in her court of law for doing something that the laws of Nigeria said that I should do. If I am oppressed, I should ask for self-determination. It's in the laws of Nigeria in 1983. Enacted in Lagos by National Assembly in Lagos. 
A que bien es regado. When I said in their court that they cannot jail me, I know what I was talking about. They can't. Not in a trillion years. All this backhand, backyard business. If they come out and face me, they will lose. That's why they came to kill me. Hmm. Listen carefully, please. What they fail to understand is that I am relying on laws made in Nigeria, which has never been repealed nor abrogated till date. To make my point, you will be shocked tonight to know that Nigerian courts do not know that the agitation for self-determination was passed as a domestic law in Lagos in Nigeria in 1983. It is written down in the laws of Nigeria. I, I ask for it to be shared tonight so you can see it. The laws I'm quoting for you tonight and upon which the validity of IPOB agitation rests is found in the laws of Nigeria, not Africa Union, not UN. By proceeding with my trial, Binta Nyako is in direct disobedience of the laws of Nigeria. And that on its own is an impeachable offense for any judge anywhere in the world. Now, we we'll continue. Self-determination is not a crime, but a right. Listen carefully. Self Self-determination is not a crime, but a right. Guaranteed under chapter A9 of the laws of the Federation of Nigeria. These laws were coded in 2004 by Obasanjo, by Obasanjo. It was passed in 1983 by Shagari. It formed part of the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1990 by Babangida. Obasanjo codified the same laws in 2004. And what does it say? Hey, but you put you So we must continue. What does it say? Oppressed people shall have the rights to free themselves from the bonds of domination by resorting to any means recognized by the international community. Article 1 of the same law provides that Nigeria shall recognize the rights, duties, and freedom and shall undertake. Nigerian law says that Binta Nyako must undertake. The House of Assembly in every state in the Z state in the Z must undertake. The National Assembly must undertake, adopt legislative and other measures to give effect to Biafra agitation for freedom. The laws of Nigeria. So why is Binta Nyako seeking my arrest for? I'm waiting for them to arrest me so this will come out in a civilized court of law anywhere in the Western world. What does this article say? Hey, these are laws made inside Lagos. Inside Lagos. Enactment and inside Lagos, Lagos. Inside Lagos, these laws were made. Yoruba media will say we are educated, we are the most educated, but you don't know this, do you? Let me tell you what it says. This is the law of Nigeria. It's here. It's here. I hope it was circulated. Please, deputy, make sure that everybody is referencing it. Very, very important. Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Article 20. Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Enacted. Incorporate is a law, existing law to you today. What does it say? Article 20. All peoples shall have right to existence. Listen carefully. They shall have the unquestionable and inalienable right to self determination. This is National Assembly of Nigeria in Lagos in 1983. They shall freely determine their political status and shall pursue their economic and social development 
according to the policy that they have freely chosen, they have freely chosen, which is exactly what I'm doing in Israel. Securing lucrative investments and participation in the economy of Biafra land from Israeli businessmen. That okay, Zipaz is trying to, Fulani have sent him to go and try and spoil it. Listen carefully. Number two. Colonized or oppressed people. The laws of Nigeria says that we as Biafrans oppressed in Nigeria, we have the right to free ourselves from the bonds of domination by resorting to any means recognized by the international community. Asking for a referendum. They don't want to understand. Poorly educated fools, grass school, labor school, or lantern and palaka keja grow. If it is you, you want to challenge me. Oh, teacher, feel sorry for you. Now, Article 20, Section 3. <laughs> This is why Binta and Yako must go to prison. And everybody associated with the persecution of IPOB. This law here says all party, all people shall have the right to the assistance of the state. Nigeria is obliged to help me to realize Biafra. Nigeria is under, under the law to help me, not to persecute me. All people shall have the right to the assistance of the state parties to the present charter in their liberation struggle against foreign domination, be it political, economic, or cultural. Economic or cultural. They are under instruction to help me. But um, this is the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria not from Africa Union, because this was ratified by debated in Lagos in 1983. On Shagari, Shagari, in 1983, made this to become law. Acknowledged in 1990 by Brangida and Obasanjo in 2004, when this very law was codified. Brought together, that's the meaning of it. The compendium, brought together. It was codified. That's how you see 1983, 1990, and 2004. I should have listened to my father and read law, to be honest. Those compromised gutter media that litter Yoruba land will never tell you this. None of these laws have been repealed or abrogated to date. It is upon these laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that I demand for a separate homeland for the people of Biafra on the laws of Nigeria. I stand on the laws of Nigeria to make my demand tonight. This claim is irrefutable and if any so-called learned friend or learned enemy wish to contest this irritable fact, they should please write to join as a party in my trial. But first of all, Bintan Yako must hear the application challenging her jurisdiction. She is not a judge. I'm telling you the truth. Why am I telling you The arrest, the detention, and murder of IPOB family members is illegal, unconstitutional, and in material breach of the written laws of Nigeria. The fact that judges and supposed learned practitioners allow this travesty to continue is indicative of the level of ignorance that pervades the Nigerian judiciary. Secession is not a crime written in law. Why am I being tried? Why are my men being tried? Why is IPOB being persecuted for doing what the laws of Nigeria say should be done to any group of people who are oppressed? This is the written law of Nigeria. How can any judge, judiciary, justice system, or state prosecutor seek to punish anybody for doing what the law says 
Now you understand why Nigeria is a zoo, don't you? That brings to conclusion, I could have gone on. But I know that the attention span of most people in the zoo is very short. This is for us as well as our enemies as well. The army deployed the entire four divisions in Biafra land from Obinze, 82 division in Enugu, Ohafia, Asa, Ovim, plus aerial support to come and dance, pattern dance in my house and kill people. But they never deployed up to one brigade against Fulani headsmen that are killing people. That is Nigeria for you. That is their judiciary for you. That is evil for you. I ask you to reflect, to ponder, and think through this very gospel tonight. And for you to know that everything IPOB is doing is legal. There is nothing to be afraid of. And we are not afraid. Because Biafra will come. And then this will form part of the story we will tell our grandchildren and great grandchildren that the world may know that at one point in time there was this group of people ordained by Elohim to bring light to Africa. For decades that light was dimmed but not extinguished. And through IPOB, that light shone very brightly once again and guided the children of Elohim to the promised land. And that land is Biafra. I thank you all for listening. And until next time, from me, from here, it is good evening.